The Wilderwood, Chapter 9 Dross skittered all over the glade, their dead wood limbs rasping on every branch and stone. Nezzy was afraid, but she felt strong in the woods and surprised herself by screaming at the dross in defiance. These horrible little creatures were made of dead plants and dark sorcery, and Nezzy had spent her whole life learning about both. She focused on the nearest dross, pointing her hand and bearing down with her mind. When she tilted her fingers down, whitish-green roots burst from the bottom of the tangled body and burrowed into the dirt below. Another started to move forward even as leaves sprouted from its shoulders and swallowed it up. The other dross paused, but more were coming out of the brush along the edge of the glade, and then suddenly, they stopped. Nezzy felt a moment of relief, and then a figure rose up out of the dirt. It was the young monk, the same one who had battled the massive rhinotaur, Carathane. He strode forward, his muscled arms forming into large pillars of earth and rock. I gotta bring you in, he said casually. Just come easy now. Druid magic is strong, but... I'm Romit or arms, and I'm the best there is. The monk lashed his long earth arms against the ground, and Nezzy stumbled as an earthquake rocked the area. A narrow crack zigzagged across the glade, reaching out and pulling the land apart. The shaking threw her off her feet and addled her brain, but Nezzy managed to lash out with a handful of brambles. Or arms blocked them with a pillar of mud, and then he thrust his hands down at the earth directly beside him. With a deep roar like some titanic beast, a wall of earth ripped itself free of the ground. It rose in a giant rippling swell and crashed down towards Nezzy like a tidal wave. She knew a half dozen spells that would help, but it felt like she was moving through tree sap. The monk was so fast, and she was just too slow. The wave loomed above her, roaring and raining gravel, and then crashed down over her. Nezzy thought she'd be crushed, but the monk had better control than that. Instead, she was gently buried, trapped in earth from the neck down. She tried to cast a spell, and the earth only rumbled tighter, squeezing out her breath. All right then, Ramit said. Are you done? The earth grumbled and roared and started to swallow her up, and then there was a crack and a blast of heat, and suddenly, Nezzy was free. A strong hand found hers, and then she was pulled out of the rubble and back to her feet. Heads up, mud man, said Harks, turning back to the monk. We're just getting started. She shrugged her shoulders and her arms burst into blue flames from the shoulder down, searing away her sleeves. The air around her rippled with heat, and Orarms took a step back. Harks leaned forward, and a lance of fire shot from her fists, licking at the air like a serpent's tongue. The monk was forced to throw up a wall of earth to block it before dancing gracefully back. Harks snarled and shot another and another. Nezzy tried to think of a spell to help her friend, but then another figure burst into the glade. It was that wicked pirate, a razor-sharp throwing axe already flying from her hand. It spun end over end, a blur of black and silver in the moonlight. Nezzy watched helplessly as it flew towards Harks, who was throwing fire at the monk, completely blind to the deadly axe whirling towards her back. Nezzy shut her eyes and heard the dull thunk. Then Harks cried out, Lachlan! Nezzy opened her eyes again. The squire was there. He had his back to Harks, the throwing axe buried deep in the wood of his shield. Or arms cartwheeled over to Thalys, the pirate already throwing another axe. This time, as she let it fly, Nezzy managed to grow some roots and trip her up, and the throw went wild. Nice one, said Harks, throwing a handful of embers into the air over Lachlan's shoulder. Right, but we need to retreat, said Lachlan, and Nezzy agreed. They could hold them off if they worked together, but they'd lose in the end. And then the dross came swarming back. Hark screamed and waved a loose arc of fire. Some of the dross scorched and shriveled, but more kept coming. 
Lachlan batted them away with his shield, but then the monk knocked him sprawling with a fist of earth, and Thalys grabbed him by the hair. Hark spun, eyes wild with fire, but the pirate only laughed. Oh, you can torch me, Firebrand, but your friend will be baked like a potato inside his armor. Hands down now, you've done more than any of us thought you could, but it's over. A stone whistled down from a hobnarl tree and smashed into the pirate's hand. She dropped Lachlan and clutched at her bloody knuckles. Nezzy and Harks both took the opening, Harks hurling a burning coal and Nezzy a spray of thorns. The pirate was singed and stung and staggered backwards. At the same time, Orarm shook the earth under the hobnarl tree and a small figure leapt clear. It swung deftly on a tree branch, flipped over backwards, and landed in a crouch next to Lachlan. Together, they stumbled back to their friends. After the night she'd been having, Nezzy wasn't even that surprised to see Wax again. Let me go, Lachlan said, pushing to his feet. The halfling stepped back, scowling. Sure, next time I'll just let them give you a haircut, okay? They snapped. Stop, Nezzy said. We, ugh. The dross were prowling closer. The monk pulled Thalys back to her feet. Nezzy didn't know what to do. Here they come, shouted Harks, which at least got everyone on the same page. They turned shoulder to shoulder and faced the dross as they skittered forward. Thalys and Orarms grinned and rushed at them as well. Nezzy felt Harks take her hand and squeeze it once. They would be overrun, but they'd make their masters proud. She'd make her mother proud. The pirate cackled and leapt forward, leading the charge. Onward! she yelled, and then the world screamed, a great groaning crack splitting the air. One of the giant trees that ringed the glade crashed down towards them. Get back! the monk shouted, dancing away, but the pirate was too slow. She jumped back and the moss-covered trunk slammed down, crushing her foot inside her high leather boot. Ow! she hollered, hopping away, clutching her ankle. Ow, 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 ow! Oh, what was that? Orarm shouted. Who's there? With a roar, a beast leapt from the forest. It smashed into the monk, and together they went rolling and roaring across the battle-churned ground. The monk was big, but his foe was nearly seven feet tall, covered in slick mud, with tiger-striped birthmarks running up and down his chest. On his legs, Nezzy saw the tattered, singed remains of a blue uniform. Gothak! Harks cried out, rushing over to help. She threw a fireball that smashed into the monk's back and sent him rolling on the ground to put out the flames. He stood and shrugged off his burning shirt, looking back at Gothak. The half-giant was hulking. The thin coat of mud masked the brass clockwork of his arm. Nezzy saw that he'd somehow sharpened the flat vice of his hand, so now his mechanical arm ended in a broad-bladed axe. These are my friends! The half-giant roared, stepping towards the pirate. Leave them alone! The monk backed away, grabbing Thalys by the shoulder. Hark stepped up next to Gothak, and Nezzy felt her heart swell. The half-giant had managed to escape, and he had found them after everything. It was a reminder that just because someone is quiet, that doesn't mean they aren't quick or clever or kind. She stepped up next to them, facing down Orarms and Thalys and a horde of dross. These are my friends, too, Nezzy called, and we aren't going with you. She smiled as Lachlan stepped up to her left, Wax joining Harks on the other side. These are our friends, Lachlan added. So make like a brass oak tree, said Harks, and get out of here. Thalys and Orarms leaned against each other eyes narrowed and hateful. I don't lose, the monk growled. I never lose. And then he raised his hands, roaring with effort. Pillars of dirt smashed up from the ground, knocking trees loose from their roots. The earth started to shake and crack again, and the trees began to teeter and tumble like block towers. We gotta go, Wax said, eyes darting around wildly. 
Come on. They turned as a brass oak as thick around as Nezzy's house crashed down behind them, blocking the way. They turned back in time to see Orarm's nose begin to bleed. He slumped against Thalys, and the pair turned and fled into the Wilderwood, the dross following after them. Hark started to follow, but another massive tree came crashing down between them. More trees fell all over, like the forest was a rolling avalanche of brown and green. Crash, smash, boom! And then suddenly, everything was still. Nezzy peered around, nervous. The earthquake had stopped, but they were trapped inside a ring of fallen trees. She saw Harks was close by, laughing wildly and picking sticks and flowers out of her hair. Lachlan and Gothak had found a few lingering dross trapped under a tree and were hacking them to splinters. The halfling shook their head in wonder and then walked over to Nezzy and Harks and nodded to them without a word. We need to get out of here before they get back, Lachlan said. I don't know, said Harks. Even little kids only get burned once before they learn not to touch the stove. So, are you the stove in this scenario? Wax asked. You're the stove. I'm the fire, Harks laughed, looking over to see Lachlan and Gothak coming over to join them. Not sure which part the squire is yet, she whispered. The tray at the bottom that catches all the crumbs and crud, Wax whispered back. Harks laughed and then asked louder for everyone to hear. What's your full name, anyway? The halfling looked up at her for a long second. Nezzy was surprised to find that, despite being a hair under four feet tall, they had an intimidating, almost commanding presence. Waxum, they said finally, smiling just a little. Waxum Whistlewood. Harks grabbed Waxum Whistlewood's shoulder and looked very serious. That is the best name I've ever heard! Wax looked offended for a moment, but then they both burst out laughing, the half-giant joining them in his rumbling bass. Nezzy smiled. They were safe for the moment, and all her new friends were back. She had thought she'd never see them again. Now I have to convince them to come with me, she thought. She knew it wouldn't be easy. They had come back to help her, but they all had other ideas about where to go. She'd have to make her case. Nezzy took a deep breath. Taking charge was definitely not her strong suit, but the warlock needed to be stopped, and her mother had trusted her to do it. Listen, everyone, she said softly. They all turned to her. We're here, Hark said. What's the plan? Um, what? Nezzy hadn't expected that. Yeah, Lachlan asked. What's the plan? We need to get out of this brush pile, and and then what? You said something about Asla. You want to come with me? When I tried to go, Lachlan said, looking embarrassed. I almost got killed out there. I had to jump into a river, either sink or be eaten by a troll. But when I leapt, a lily pad caught me. They grew up one after another, and next thing I knew, I was far away from the troll and on my way back to you. Me too, Hark said. Well, kind of. That pirate Thalys almost had me, but this tree grew branches, like a ladder up a cliff. I'm no expert, but Babadin taught me to always follow good magic, and anything that saves my life and brings me back to friends in the wild, well, that's good magic. Good magic, Lachlan agreed. I don't, I, I don't know if you're right about Sir Rancier, but you're right that the rest of the order is too far away. He raised his right hand, the one wearing the red gauntlet. Whatever power is in that book, we can't let the warlock use it. If Orlam is needed, I'll have to be his sword. Nezzy felt a pulling in her heart. The Wilderwood. It had sent her friends back to her. They were going to help her on her quest. I'm coming to, Waxham said. No one invited you, Lachlan said. I'll invite them. You're invited, said Harks. The Wilderwood invited me, Wax said. When I tried to go, I got turned around and something was chasing me. The dangers of being small in the woods, I guess. Everything thinks you're a snack. 
I thought it was going to get me, but just before it could, a new path appeared and I followed it and it led me here. They turned to Nezzy. So, uh, I guess I'm coming. We go together, Gothak said, smiling. Wait, you too? Lachlan asked. Me too, Gothak said. Sail train's gone. No job, no family. I stay with friends now. That's right, said Harks, glaring at the others as though daring them to disagree. You're more than welcome to come, all of you, Nezzy said. Be a fool to turn away a friendly half-giant in the wilderness of the world, Waxham said, shaking hands with Gothak, a thick little hand lost in the half-giant's palm. Fine, said Lachlan, smiling now too. But somebody get him a shirt. They laughed at that for a moment, and then Nezzy smiled wider, tears standing in her eyes. Thank you all for coming with me, she said. I think that together, we can finish what our master started. I think we can make it through the Wilderwood. Of course, said Harks. Besides, you're a druid, and you're the only one who has actually been to the Wilderwood before. You're our best chance for staying alive. Nezzy blushed and nodded, but she felt the shame of a secret deep in her belly. So we go north, Waxham said. How do we get out of this mess, though? Hothead, do you want to burn us a path? My control isn't so great, Harks admitted. This much wood, this close? Well, it's what I like to call a burnination zone. She looked over at the half-giant. Better get that axe arm ready, Gothak. I think you've got a lot of chopping to do. The half-giant nodded and walked to the nearest log. No, no, that was a joke, Hark said, pulling him back. It would take you a year to chop through all that. So what then? Lachlan asked. We try and climb over? No, Nezzy said. I've got this. Her friends were with her, the quest was before her, and the woods were around her. She relaxed breathing deeply and opening herself to the power of nature, as her mother had taught her. Nezzy stepped forward and spread her arms. The north-facing wall of the dead trees trapping them seemed to glow with a yellow-green light, bright as the moon. The light formed into thousands of tiny spores that grew quickly into fiercely glowing mushrooms that spread up and down and over. As Nezzy focused, the tree started to bend and sink, returning to the dirt as they crumbled, like a hundred years of natural decay in the space of a minute. When Nezzy lowered her hands, the wall of trees was gone, and only a low mound of loam remained. Wow, Hark said. Good magic, Gothak said, smiling his big wide smile at Nezzy. The friends all walked through to freedom. And as they did, the sun peeked over the horizon. The gentle light of dawn flooded through the wilderwood, and it responded in minutes. Flowers of a thousand shapes and shades opening around them in an endless symphony of color. Nezzy drank it in, relishing the innate beauty, and then realized that everyone was looking up at her. Well, said Harks with a smile, lead the way. Nezzy blushed but when she looked around, the others were nodding. They would follow her, help her. She wouldn't be alone, and together, they could do whatever they had to. All right, Nezzy said. Anyone care for a walk in the woods? And the five of them started off, heading deeper into the forest. Nezzy knew they were facing both an impossible evil and an endless unknown. But they would face them together. And that made all the difference. End book one. Thanks for listening.